So now it's time to have a look at the server. The server code stays in these three packages and the controller and model are very much the same as for the blocking socket example so I will not look at all in those. Instead let's have a look at the net package. Still there are two classes chat server and client handler and still uh, chat server handles things common to all connected clients and there's one client header instance for each particular client. In the chat server uh, there is an inner class client and that uh, inner class is the chat service handle to one particular client. So for each connected client there is one instance of this inner class client and it holds the reference to the client handler object. So the, the client handler object is the reference to an object of the class client handler. And also uh, each client instance has a queue with messages to send to that particular client. In the client side code that we looked at previously there was just one queue uh, since there was only one node connected and it was the server. So the queue of messages w uh, contained messages that should be sent to the server. Here there is one queue for each particular client that contains messages to that particular client and there is also a queue uh, containing messages that shall be sent to all clients as we soon will see. So the main method just creates an instance of the chat server and calls the serve method. So the communicating thread uh, handling the sockets on the server side spends its life in the serve method. Remember there is only one thread handling all communication. On the server side it means this particular thread handles the server socket accepting connection requests and all client sockets sending and receiving. So there is just one thread on the server side for all sockets, server sockets and communicating sockets on the server side. And that th thread executes this uh, serve method. Let's start here in the serve method and see what happens when the server is started. Uh, first there's a call to init selector which creates the selector. Then there's a call to init listening socket channel which uh, creates server socket channel, sets it to be non-blocking. Uh, binds it to the specified port number and registers the selector. So we are now interested in accept operations. We want to accept new connection requests. And this uh, registration will never change. The only interest we will ever have in the server socket is uh, accepting new connections. Okay, then we enter the run loop which starts here. So all, all this is the run loop of the communicating thread. And that is where it will spend the rest of its lifetime until the server is shut down. Okay, it's not time to broadcast. We will cover, soon cover how to broadcast to a message to all clients. Uh, but now it will just stop on the call to select and be blocked waiting for a connection request on the server socket. When there is such a connection request, the select method returns. We come to the next line where we retrieve an iterator over the set of all keys Currently there is only the server socket key representing the accept operation. So we uh, loop through all the keys, uh, get the next one and remove it from the ready set. We should not handle it again. And uh, unless the server socket channel has been closed for some reason, the key will be valid. So we will arrive here and the key is acceptable now that uh, the selector was woken because of a connection request. So we will arrive in the start handler method uh, which creates a new client handler instance which was the class handling a particular client and do all initialization related to a newly connected client. First retrieve the server socket channel from the selected key then call accept actually establish the connection and as you know by now accept will not block here. Uh, configure the newly created uh, socket channel connected to the uh, client to be non-blocking. This channel is returned by the accept operation. Create an instance of the handler that handles connection to one client. And then here on this line, I've set the interest operation to be write. The first thing we want to do with the newly connection is to write. We, we want to write the entire conversation up to here. And then also uh, set an attachment here, uh, which is an instance of the inner class client that 
we looked at previously. So remember that with each uh, registration, each key, you can have an associated object. And in this case, this is, it is an instance of the client class. So that's how the reference to the client handler instance is kept by the chat server. There's no list of, of, of uh, client handlers. But instead, the client handler reference uh, here is passed to the client object there. And the entire cl client object is saved as an attachment to the selection key of this uh, client's uh, channel. Okay, and uh, to the uh, client constructor, we pass, as just said, this handler reference, but also the entire conversation up to this point. One line left, and it's to set the linger time. Uh, we want to linger on close to finish sending if the socket is closed. There is no timeout for socket channels, so we could invent some own timeout handling using a separate thread, but uh, yeah, that, that w in reality we should have done that, but to keep the program a bit simpler, I, I chose not to do that. So there is no timeout. In yeah, but now let's look at the client constructor. It just saves the reference to the client handler. To the client handler, it is saved there. And then the uh, conversation up to this point that was passed here is being iterated over here and all entries in the conversation are added to this client's internal queue of messages that shall be sent to this particular client. So the each entry is added to the messages to send the queue which is declared here and will eventually be sent as we soon will see. But for now it is only added to this queue. So remember again that each client has its own queue of messages that shall be sent to this client. Let's have a look at this method, create broadcast message. It does all the uh, manipulation to create a proper message. Prepends the broadcast message type and uh, adds the length header just as was done on the client side and then wraps the entire string in a byte buffer. Right, that was everything that happened when a new client was started. So now we have at least one connected client and the same story repeats for each client that connects. Okay, we've seen how to establish a connection. Two things, other things can be done of course. We can receive from a client and we can send to a client. Let's first look at sending to a client. Remember that when starting a new handler, that is the initial handling of a newly created client, we set the interest of that client's channel to be right. So that means we will eventually arrive here in at is writable and we will send to a client. And that is when the entire initial conversation that was passed to the client instance the, of the inner class will be sent to the client. Okay, so let's have a look at that send to client method. Maybe we should um, run it in the debugger. Let's start server and uh, connect a new client and see what happens. Now connection with the client has been established and we have registered right interest for the newly created client channel and the channel is ready for sending. So we have a ride here on purpose to send the conversation, the previous conversation. There is no previous conversation since um, this, is, this is the first client. Let's do something with this client and then start another one so, so that there actually is a conversation to send. So now we are about to, to send the existing conversation to this newly created client. So let's enter this send to client method. On this line, the green line, we retrieve the attachment from the key. And remember the attachment was the instance of the client object. So maybe I should illustrate how this actually works. It's becoming a bit difficult to understand. This is the uh, chat server, the, the instance of this class. Uh, it has a selector. The selector has uh, various keys registered. There is one key for the uh, server socket channel and there is a number of keys, one for each socket channel. So this is one key and this is n keys, one for each socket channel. And these keys that are related to the socket channels, each of them has an attachment that is an instance of the client class, which is an inner class uh, in this chat server object. And each of those client classes has a reference to a client handler instance and also has a, a queue of messages to send. 
So this is how the chat server object relates to the client handler objects. And now on this line we retrieved the attachment. That is this client object here was retrieved and is stored here in this variable. And then this line here where the send all method is called that is the method in this object and that of that method in turn as we soon will see will call the client handler right so uh, we have retrieved the client object and then we're about to call send all let's continue executing now we are in the send all operation send all is located in this object and uh, what happens well we loop through uh, the internal queue messages to send this queue here is this queue there so we'll loop through the that one pick all the messages and for each of the messages call the send a message method in the client handler there so we are extracting all messages that shall be sent to this client and, and we are sending them so let's enter the send message method now we are there and what happens well we just uh, send the message write the message to the client channel and um, if there are remaining bytes that were not sent it means we could not send the entire message then there is no point in continuing to send then we just should, should just abort and retry sending this message later and we do that by throwing the this exception if the exception was thrown we will immediately leave this method without executing this line which is where the message is removed from the messages to send the queue peak only takes the first message it does not remove it it is removed here if it was sent okay then we return to the call to send all which was here and if we got the message exception that that we could not send all messages then nothing happens we just leave without executing this line but if we could send all messages then we change the interest operation to read then we want to read uh, messages from this client uh, okay, and if we get an IO exception, it means the the uh, connection was shut down. The client is not running anymore. So then we remove this key fr from the set of keys we are interested in. And that's done in the remove client method here. So that was how to send the message. Now let's see what happens when a message is received from a client. The debugger is still running. And now let's place a breakpoint here, which is where we will come when the client is ready for receiving which means a message has arrived in the in buffer of the communicating socket and is ready to be read okay breakpoint is there let's send a message from the client and we are here so let's enter the receive from client method retrieve the client that was attached to this key the instance of the client class and then we call the receive message in the handler. So note that here we immediately call the receive message method in the handler object of this client object. So we directly go to the client handler object. Here's the receive message method. First, we clear the buffer. MSG from client is declared up here. And just like on the client side, it's a direct buffer. Clear it, which means to reset position to zero. So we start filling it from scratch again. Then we read from the client channel and write to the buffer. If the number of red bytes is minus one, it, it means the client has closed the connection and we threw an exception. But now we actually read 20 bytes. So it's the message high there and it's also the length header and the message type entry. We got the message let's continue we have to extract the message from the buffer which is down here flip and then read and in between we have declared the byte array that will contain the result and return a string containing those bytes then we pass the received string to the message splitter so remember the message splitter was an object responsible for concatenating all received strings and extracting complete messages from those received strings and now we are leaving the communicating thread and start handling in another thread. It is not the, the communicating thread that should perform the handling of the received message. We have the communicating thread, the one we have been following this far. There was a message sent over the network. It arrived in the communicating socket. It was read and, and now we have passed it to the MSG splitter that is responsible for extracting complete messages from the sequence of red strings. Now we are leaving this thread and that's why there is this line here where we 
submit the task to the built-in fork join pool. The uh, fork join pool will call the MSG splitter, extract the message and will handle it. And actually this handling, as we soon will see, will include resubmitting it to the communicating thread, which will pass it to all clients, including the sending client. These are also sockets. The message will be sent back to all clients this way. You can see that there is one communicating thread responsible for all socket handling, both receiving and sending. And then there's a thread in the fork join pool over here that interprets the message and does whatever handling is required. Messages are passed between the threads using the MSG splitter here and over here there will be a queue which is actually the queue of um, messages to send that we have already seen. Now we leave the received message in the message splitter and then submit this object to the fork join pool which means the run method will be executed. So let's place a breakpoint here where the message is read and continue. So now we are there. Now we switch thread. Let's get the message from the message splitter. MSG here, message, is an instance of inner class called message that represents one message. Uh, let's have a look here, MSG. The message type is entry and the message body is high again. Uh, under the switch statement we should arrive at the en entry case. There, there was an entry. This was a message of type entry as can be seen down here. The handling of this is a call to the broadcast method in the chat server. Uh, let's do that. The message will be the username, Stina, as can be seen, plus the delimiter, which is a colon, and then the message body. Let's enter the broadcast method. First, we pass it to the controller, which will pass it to the model where the entire conversation is stored. We set the flag time to broadcast, which is used in the serve method by the communicating thread. Create the byte buffer containing the complete message, including message type and length header and, and everything. And then add it to the queue of messages that shall be sent. And then it's time to wake up the selector. So now th this handling thread has completed its work. We're switching back to the communicating thread. The message was passed via the messages to send buffer. So then let's place a breakpoint here in the serve method in the send to client. Actually, we are back to sending a message, right? Previously, we looked at how a message was sent and now we are back there. Let's just see that this is where we arrive. Ah, so we're back in the communicating thread and we are ready to send this message to all clients. And we've already seen how message sending is done. So, so that was the chat server.